friends, welcome back. I'm Betsy and today we're going to look at 1940s vintage clothing from Catherine's collection. So my last buy from Catherine's house, I was up in the attic, went through those big cardboard boxes and uh, in those boxes I found her 50s and her 40s pieces. Why was it shoved up in the attic in these big boxes? Well, my guess is in 1961, they moved into that house. So in the bedroom closets downstairs in the house, there was pretty much 60s and on up into the 2000s. So all her older stuff probably in the move got put into these big cardboard boxes and stored up in the attic space. They were in the back of the attic. So that was probably because they were the first things that were put in the attic. So when she moved out of her house that they had in the forties and the fifties, those clothing got purged into cardboard boxes and stuck up in the attic. So let's take a look at some of her forties pieces today. And in honor of this occasion, I am wearing one of Catherine's 1940s novelty print rayon blouses. This one has horses on it. This is absolutely one of my favorite finds from Catherine's um, estate from her house. And I am thrilled to be able to f actually wear it, that it fits me, and also to be able to add it to my collection. I have paired that with a pair of 1940s trousers that I got back in the 2000s, early 2000s, out of an auction that I went to, an estate auction, of a woman who was a whack during World War II. I've had these trousers for a really long time. Sometimes they fit me, sometimes they don't. This morning I put them on and I was delighted that they actually did button up. They do semi-fit me. I still have a little bit of a ways to go. I'm on a healthy eating plan here this year trying to get myself um, together, as my doctor says, six months, six months, Betsy, you got six months. So I'm working on that right now, but I was delighted to be able to button them, their side button, they have the drop loop waist on them, they are gabardine, and they are classic 1940s Ro Rosie the Riveter trousers that women would wear during that time when they worked in the factories and when they would go out and do men's work as the men were overseas fighting. So very happy, button those up, still got a little ways to go, but thought I'm gonna go ahead and wear them for the video and let's look at Catherine's 40s pieces. So these two dressing gowns were found earlier in the summertime. I pulled them out, they are clean, they are ready, they are, they are in tip top shape. I pulled them out because I really wanted them to be seen in this video to represent Catherine's 40s collection. Um, and I showed these at the end of a video, so a lot of people don't always stick around to the end of a video, but I'm going to show them again. So this is a little novelty floral print wrap house dress. It's cotton, and it's just like a little wrap dress to it. This one has a zipper front on it and a tie back waist. So these would have been something that Catherine would have worn first thing in the morning, you know, when she woke up before she formally dressed. They, um, she would put this on, maybe make her husband breakfast. Oh no, that's, she wasn't making a breast, breakfast. She's probably making herself breakfast because her husband worked for the railroad and he was gone Monday through Friday. So she was, he only came home on weekends. So that was her married life. He worked for the railroad and um, was gone most of the time. So I'm sure that was tough for her, but I don't know. Maybe it was tougher when he was home for the weekend. Who knows? I used to like to fight a lot from what I was told. <laughs> On to rayon blouses. Um, a very basic rayon blouse here um, from her collection. And I just wanted, I pulled this because I thought it was really interesting. The style of the collar. A lot of people think that collars like this are from the 70s, but actually they originated and they became popular in, um, I'm going to say late 30s and 40s throughout. Um, interesting things they would do to their collars. And this one you can see is pointed. So dagger collars really are not, it didn't originate in the seventies. It's been around for a while. The other thing that's been around for a while is shoulder pads. Um, shoulder pads started thirties, forties, is prominent in the forties because it gave you that masculine 
silhouette that they were going for. So that's, and then it came back in the 80s. So that didn't originate in the 80s. So just a little history lesson there for you. Um, another little novelty print rayon. This one has really bad condition issues. It's got holes throughout. And this will just go into my collection and I'll keep it there. Is something like that sellable? Sure. Um, what would you get on it? It all depends on who wants it. So, but that'll stay with me. Um, one of her dresses, she was born in 27. So in the forties, she would, would have been in her early teens to her early twenties would have been the span. And you will see that, um, her, she was poor growing up. Her parents went through the depression. She went through the depression. The forties were poor for her. She was the only child in the family. Her father was a coal miner. Um, it was just a poor time. I don't believe they had indoor plumbing in the house. I don't know if they had running water in the house. Um, so yes, you will see that reflecting in her clothing that she grew up in poverty at that point in her life. You will see a lot of condition issues on the dress. Things were mended, things ripped, things tore, they mended them. You know, she probably outgrew this dress at some point because the armpits were ripped out of it and mended. And that's what you're going to see in, in her clothing. Adorable little pink dress. You know, she loved pink and blue and she's loved pink and blue her whole entire life. This one has condition issues. Um, there is hem. I need to rehem the sleeves on it. There's some tears here at the shoulder on a piece. There are some holes throughout. It's got that side metal zipper. Beautiful little dress though. And it's got the puff sleeve in it. Another little house day dress. Condition issues. Darts have ripped out of it. Underarms have ripped out of it. And you just do the best you can to mend it. Does it still have value for someone? Yes, this will still have value for someone. And once again, how much? I don't know. It depends on who wants it, you know? It, who, if you really want something, then you're going to put a higher value on it versus when you don't want something and you're just like, eh, okay, I'll take it. She did have quite a few nice little novelty print dresses. This is a rayon novelty print. It's got the colorway on it is wonderful with that blue and the purple and the pink coming in. Does it have condition issues? Yes, it does. It has holes in, in areas on the dress. It is a side button. There is no zipper in it. It's a side button. So I would probably date this in the earlier spectrum of the forties. Still has value for someone. Um, even though it does have some, some condition issues, it still is valuable just because these are rare and the print is wonderful on it but as you can see it does have like you can see here there's a little hole in the back i don't know if the camera's picking it up but there's a little hole there there's some holes throughout a novelty print another novelty print i don't think this one was worn by her and the only reason i say that is because it was pinned up like she was going to adjust how the arm fit her and it's in really really wonderful condition there are a few spots on it from being stored but no holes that I could find it has the belt to it but it doesn't look like the belt was ever finished so not sure about this but I will say that this is in really great condition and the print on it is is really neat and I love the shoulder detail how it comes around in the front and kind of wraps like that adorable floral print and that pink that she loves so much you got like a tiered and ruffle skirt on it I do have to do some hemming there but it has the short puff sleeve it's just romantic and dainty got a lovely puff sleeve to it just um, very nice, perfect for summertime. Another novelty print dress here. Um, you will see the 40s dresses are known for their drapes. Lovely, I mean, they knew how to make a dress and they knew how to make a dress that flattered women. They had a lot of peplums during that time. The drape here, the print itself is quite delicious on this dress got that side metal zipper 
does have a few flaws on it. There is a hole in the very back here. There are um, a little bit of a strain here in some areas, but other than that, it is in very nice condition. And you can see she was small back then because she was in high school. These are Jersey Knits dresses from the 40s. These came out of other bags of vintage clothing that I've pulled out of our house. These were mixed in other places from the summer. You probably saw me go through these. I wanted to include these because these, these are 40s also, just another like style of 40s. And these are just a Jersey Knit, novelty Jersey Knit. There are condition issues on this dress. There's a condition issue on this dress. The elastic needs to be redone on this dress and it looks like it was chopped at one point. Not sure if it was chopped, but it does definitely look like it had been chopped at one point. So condition issues on those. Very similar to the blue and white dress. Um, very, I think it's the same pattern, actually, just a different fabric that she used. These are handmade. Um, condition issues on this dress, yes. I soaked this one for 24 hours. It really helped lighten the stain. I'm not going to soak it any more than that. It does have um, armpit stains, discoloration under the armpits there. I soaked them as best I could. I, there's only a certain amount of soaking you want to do before um, you get afraid of losing the print or the dye itself in your items. So you have to be careful with that because it'll eventually start lightening the fabric itself. So this, um, it does have condition issues. So one of the things I could do, I could just sell it as is, how it is right here. Perhaps I want to explore dyeing. I could try to do a re-dye on this in this rayon. Um, for this dress, I will just probably sell it as is um, to somebody and not worry about redying it because I still think it's very it has good value and it's very well wearable where it's at. And somebody actually would probably really like it just the way it is. Another um, another little piece here. Um, sheer, perfect for summer, side zipper on it. You got the pockets here going on in the front. Just a real basic little piece, little dress. Well, I guess I can't say it's basic. It's actually a, a very nice little dress. It's almost very reminiscent to me of a late 30s piece. So I would say that this might actually be um, possibly late 30s, very early 40s. But I like the tie in the front to tie around and this is in very nice condition this i would say is probably going to be a late 40s piece just because of how big the skirt has now gotten uh, after the war the skirts got bigger again um, just the style of it gives me that cocktail dress from the late 50s or late 40s early 50s and it also has the side zip Such an adorable little velvet dress from her collection. I'm going to say this is probably early 40s with this dress. It has condition issues. The hem is out of it. It's got wear. The velvet is gone under the arms. The velvet's gone in other places on the dress. This, this has some severe condition issues to it. It's not perfect. Is it still wearable? Is it still collectible? Yeah, somebody will find this adorable and want to add that to their collection. Two of the same dresses, one in green and one in black. Just basic, I love the little um, button front on it, side metal zip. Just a nice basic, I'm gonna say utility-wise dress. Just a little rayon dress from the 40s button front on it, covered buttons. I'm guessing this is probably going to be later 40s, um, probably when she was in her 20s. Um, what happens a lot with dresses like this, purple dresses for some reason, they get that fade going on. It has something to do with the dyes 
and they're, they start to get fady. So you might have some lighter purple here and some darker purple. And that just seems to be what happens with that dye. So here's the reason why I wore my own um, 1940s pants today um, is because I did find, this is the second pair of 40s pants that I found in um, Catherine's collection. So this is, this is probably her high, a high school pair of pants that she wore. This is gabardine. It's got side buttons on it um, and a side zip there. It's got drop loop waist and it's also got the cuff at the bottom. This has just got a wonderful drape to it. These are tiny. These are going to be probably about a 24 inch waist. So this was when she was younger and in her high school days, but so classic and so rare and so desirable. Beautiful pair of pants there. Here is a knit dress. This has a very old label in it and a 100% cotton size 16 WPL number 7339. So this one has a WPL um, number in it. Um, wonderful condition, no holes in it. I love the, um, just the, the stripe of the sleeves, um, and the front and then the buttons on it. Just a nice little knit dress from that era. When a lot of people think of forties, these are the classic forties look that they think of, um, with the rhinestones and the detailing on it. I can't tell you, I mean, black was a very popular color in the forties basic little black dress like this, everybody should have in their wardrobe. Another um, basic, I, I mean, they just knew how to make dresses in the 40s. Look at the drape. Look at the peplum on that, the bow, the illusion neckline here. They just knew how to dress a woman. And this would have been something you could go to any dress store and find. Um, the quality is just amazing in vintage clothing from that time frame. I have to do a little bit of a sew on the back. The back little back belt hair thing needs to be tucked in and sewed. But other than that, this dress is, is perfect. This was one of the first 40s pieces that I found from my original haul. I got very excited when I found this piece. So I'm showing it to you again because it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous and it's in wonderful condition it has um if i recall it had a flaw somewhere on it but i can't recall where it is right now because it's not an obvious flaw but there is a flaw there to it but it's just absolutely amazing it's just amazing it's beautiful the print you know the rayon it's just i don't know i can't describe how amazing this dress is it's just beautiful now, when I was going through my last haul, when I was there to take Catherine's last haul out of her house, uh, he invited me to go over across the street to grandmother's house and to clear out some closets over there. So I have some of grandmother's um, 1940s vintage from her. I've brought down a few things to show you from her collection. So once again, just an adorable little puff sleeve. And there you got your pad padding in the shoulder to keep that puff up. Beautiful. It's almost like a little ribbon detailed dress. Now, what am I finding? This is what you're finding. Here's the flaw. Look at that underarm seam ripped to Hades. You will find that in vintage clothing. Why is it that the first place that goes is the underarm? I don't know. I think because they wore these as daily wear. And then they would move around and do everything like normal. They didn't have sweatpants back then. They didn't have juicy couture. So they were wearing these. And um, unfortunately, the underarms wore out first. I love this little, um, oh, it's almost like a check kind of plaidish little green house dress. It's got the puff shoulder in here. Or I mean, yeah. It's got padding in here for the puff sleeve, just a button front, um, lovely little detailing here. This is a great little conditioned dress and this is in a larger size. I believe this is gonna be a 31 waist on that. 
beautiful polka dots, puff sleeve going on. You have the padding there to puff up your sleeve. Um, this is going to be a larger size, but it has condition issues because once again, your armpits are gone. So your armpits are gone. Your armpits are gone. Um, there's a little bit of a hole here because they sewed down and it created a hole. But in general, look at the, just the, just the empire waist. I'm telling you, they just knew how to make a dress back then that flattered people. No matter what your body size, you could find a dress that would flatter you. Another little dress. These are grandma's dresses, right? Because they're a larger size. And um, blow out the armpit. Blow out the armpit. So these are a bit of a wounded bird, but even the detailing is just beautiful. Just, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. I just love that. I love that time frame. Another little, um, grandma liked darker colors. So her 40s pieces consisted of darker colored dresses and polka dots. Just darker colored dresses. Got some nice little details. This actually dresses, got some underarm issues to it. Underarm issues. Grandma worked hard. This must have been one of her best dresses. It doesn't look like it, there's no flaws to it. It really hasn't been worn very much. But Grandma would probably wear this beautiful dress when she went to anything special. This one has a lot of condition issues to it. It definitely had some sort of seam blowout. So I'm going to have to go in and sew up the seam in the same way the other side is draped. So that's going to be a little bit of a complicated doing. And this one has um, a lot of fade to it. So this is going to be a can candidate for me. I'll fix the seam first, but this will be a dye candidate for me. So when I'm playing around with dyes this summer, I'll play around with dyeing this dress. And that's how I learn about dyeing and how it works and what dyes do this. And so this will be an experimentation for me. And the last thing I have is this little jumper dress from the school. I'm not sure if this is from where Georgine went to school. Hi, girlfriend. Hi, girlfriend. What are you doing? I'm not sure if this dress is from when Georgine was in school or when Catherine was in school herself. They were Catholics. I know the kids went to Catholic. I know she went to Catholic school. This would have been the neighborhood school, the Catholic school that she went to in the town. So this is, it's a vintage dress. I'm not quite 100% positive. It seems like it's gabardine. So I'm guessing this is probably going to be 1940s. So those are some of my finds from Catherine's house, particularly dealing with her 40s collection. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.